Have you ever worked super hard to close a new lead only to lose a sale? What if I told you that losing certain clients should be counted as a victory instead of a feat and that it might even benefit you and your business in the long run? Today I'll be discussing a very touchy subject. Why it's okay to lose some clients and the top questions you should ask to not only grow your business but help build long-term and profitable client relationships. If you are enjoying your videos, make sure that you are subscribed to our channel and hit that bell button so you are notified every single time a new video drops. If you haven't seen me before, my name is Ace Marie and I'm one of the brand managers at 360 Marketing Solutions. I specialize in sales and I've got over 10 years of experience. I've learned so many tips and tricks and I would love to share them with you. So when building or growing your business, you might think that any client is a good client, right? But in actual fact, that is not true. Your product might just not be the right fit for them. And if you persist on selling it to them, the relationship and the purchase cycle will be extremely short-lived. Don't believe me? Let me share some interesting stats with you today. 50% of sales time is wasted on unproductive prospecting. That's quite a huge chunk of time. Increasing client retention by as little as 5% can actually boost profits by as much as 95%. And studies show that salespeople do about 80% of the talking during a sales call, I know, and they're not asking the right questions and they, they're not listening. It's much more important to firstly know who your ideal client is, and secondly, to understand what their pain points are, and thirdly, to determine if your product can even solve their specific problem. Today, I'm going to be sharing my top five tips and insights on determining if a client is ideal for your business and when to just simply let them go. But before I go on, tell me in the comments how long you spend listening and engaging before recommending your brand to a client. If you answer anything between five or 10 minutes, you might be surprised to learn that that is actually too short a time. Before I get into my tips, it's time for another shocking statement. You need to realize that most brands or products are not suited to every client and it is not personal. This brings me to tip one. Every client has a story. You need to get to know your client's past, present and future hopes to really understand their specific pain points. Let's say you were selling a health-related product to a client. Before just jumping in and asking why they need it, rather start by asking something like, can you tell me a bit more about your health journey? Or where do you see yourself health-wise in the next few months or in the next few years? You will be able to obtain important information like why they want to purchase and what has or hasn't worked for them and what they're actually looking to gain from this specific purchase or what are they looking to learn from this journey. Secondly, don't assume your client's specific pain point. This is very true for salespeople and it ties into effective listening which I actually covered in a previous video. Very often a client will start explaining their frustration or pain point and instead of just listening and asking more questions, you jump to a conclusion and you want to offer a solution, right? Test your understanding first. Am I right in saying that you were most frustrated with the fact that your previous supplement didn't increase your energy levels, for instance? If you are not sure about your client's pain points, you need to ask more questions instead of just assuming that you know what they want. When you base your sale on assumption, you are very likely to fail and to lose that sale. That brings me to my third tip. Focus first on your client and secondly on the solution or on the sale. Once you understand your client's exact needs, you can determine whether or not your product is actually suited to your client. Now this is where it gets difficult. Sometimes your brand just won't be suited to a specific client or their needs. And that's okay. By referring that client or suggesting something else, you not only prove to that client that you care about them, but it actually increases your chances of a referral. 
Happy clients will always talk about the experience, whether they bought with you or not. I actually remember fitting a very expensive evening gown and the assistant understood my needs and she told me that they don't really have something that I'm looking for, but she's happy to help me in any way. And I had such a great experience in that store, even though I didn't buy from them, I referred quite a few of my friends to their store because I had a great experience. And this not only ensures a happy client, but it saves you the agony of working with a client that is not suited to what you have to offer and won't actually appreciate you or your brand. Thirdly, know your worth. This is something we tell all of our clients. When running a business, you might be faced with clients who want to pay less than what you uh, are currently charging for the service that you offer. It's so important to firstly ask yourself, why is this client asking for discounts? When clients are not willing to pay your price, their perceived value of what you offer is actually lower than the price. You aren't meeting the exact need, uh, so they don't see it as a necessity, or they are just not your ideal client. And when selling to the wrong audience, you will always have to justify your pricing and you'll have to try and explain your, your, your value and what you're offering. If you want to know more about the importance of finding and selling to your ideal audience, Anandi covers this in one of our previous videos. Go and have a look. Fourthly, not closing that sale immediately might set you up for success later even though it doesn't always feel like that. Old school sales techniques teaches us and prompts you to always be closing. But in truth, depending on where the client is in the sales funnel, they might not be ready to purchase and that's okay. Maybe they need some more info. Maybe they don't trust you yet. Or maybe you haven't identified that exact need. If it is your ideal client, but you still need to do some work before closing that sale, you can take my advice. Don't force it. A for sale never results in a happy long-term client. They might purchase from you, but they won't be happy and they're very, very unlikely to return to your business. What I would suggest is invite them over for an info webinar. Send them a special on a product that they were interested in. And when they do purchase, they'll be much more likely to make a bigger purchase and invest in your company long-term. Lastly, a successful sale is not a sprint. It is a marathon. When you start approaching your sale like a long-term relationship and you value and you care about your client and their needs, selling then turns into helping and your client will be happy to pay you. You need to be prepared to invest yourself, your time, your knowledge and your passion every single day. And even though you might not see an immediate return on investment, believe me, when you do, you will see sustainable growth and your clients will build your client base for you. I want to end off today with some very wise words. The more you focus on the value you can give, the less you'll have to focus on the price. If you found this video very helpful, please share it. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of our weekly updates or videos where we talk all things digital marketing and sales. And if you've got any questions you want to ask us, uh, please feel free to pop them in the comments. And if you need help with your digital marketing strategy or your sales, you can head on over to our website. We offer a complimentary 30-minute discovery call for all of our clients to help you determine the best course of action for your business to set you up for success.